My name is Emmanuel Champong. I'm a professor of history, for African history and African and African American studies. And I'm also the director of the Center for African Studies at Harvard University. Uh, this past semester, I've been a fellow at the Steers. And while here, I've been completing a book manuscript on the first generation of independent African leaders and the making of the African nation state. And this is a project that goes back maybe about a decade. And my interest was linked to the 50th independence anniversaries, beginning with Ghana 2007, and then all those nations that became independent in 1960, celebrating their golden anniversaries in 2010. It was a widespread conversation whether Africa had anything to celebrate, considering that in 50 years we had not developed, our economies were not strong, unemployment is high, and what had been achieved by political independence. So as a historian, I decided I wanted to revisit the first two decades of independence to show the excitement internationally and within the continent that marked independence in Africa, that there were real opportunities to develop, that the outcome is not what we hoped for, does not mean that independence was not meaningful or that there were not important lessons to learn from those two decades of independence before Africa went broke from the 1980s and many countries became wards of the IMF and the World Bank and became practitioners of structural adjustment. So I will give a lecture which looks at Africa's I'll call it aborted or abortive attempt at industrialization in those first two decades. And the case of Ghana, as my case study. Why revisit industrialization? I look at what we've gone through COVID and the struggle and the competition for everything from PPEs to ventilators, and all of a sudden, an element of self-dependence or self-sufficiency economically has become important. It is anticipated, and economists point out, that after COVID, they see a moderation of this hyper-globalization we've gone through in the last two decades, and a return to more national sovereignty and autonomy. So we'll see more countries returning to manufacturing more important things for themselves. This idea of outsourcing much of manufacturing, we'll see a moderation of that. So I turn to Africa and I say, okay, so if we are to return to our own domestic and social priorities, what are our models? There is a sense in which much of our political economy and much of recent economic policy has been dominated by the World Bank. So I wanted to take us to the first two decades where we have more nationalist approaches to economic development. Indeed, before 1980 or before the late 1970s, only one sub-Saharan African country, which is Ghana, had become a recipient of an IMF stabilization program. So structural adjustment is very much from the post-1980s. So I'll take you to visit the early two decades to see examples of African economic development.